Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today, inshallah, we will cover a new topic which is cubital fossa. The elbow is the area connecting the arm with the forearm. See here in this diagram, you can see the arm and the forearm which is connected at the elbow joint. This is elbow joint or the cubital region. Okay, this is cubital region. The cubital fossa is a triangular depression that lies in the anterior aspect of the elbow. This is the cubital fossa which lies on the anterior aspect of the elbow. This fossa is very important because it conveys several major structures between the arm and the forearm. Because see here, this is the arm and this is the forearm and this is the cubital fossa which is on the anterior aspect of the elbow. Now we will see what are the boundaries of the cubital fossa. First of all, laterally it is bounded by brachioradialis muscle. See here, this is lateral boundary and here the brachioradialis muscle is present. Medially, you can see that this is pronator teres. This is pronator teres which is present medially. Base, base is formed by an imaginary line drawn between two epicondyles of the humerus forming the base of the triangle or base of the cubital fossa. So this is medial epicondyle and here there will be lateral epicondyle so base will be formed by an imaginary line joining the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle of the humerus in the floor we can see many muscles which are supinator muscle on the lateral side and the brachialis muscle on the medial side in the floor two muscles are present laterally supinator muscle and medially we can see the brachialis muscle Roof is formed by the skin and the fascia reinforced by the bicepital aponeurosis. There will be bicepital aponeurosis. See here in this diagram you can see laterally we have the brachioradialis muscle. This is lateral side because radius is present on the lateral side. This is brachioradialis muscle. Medially we can see the pronator teres muscle. Base is formed by, two, by an imaginary line which is joining the medial and the lateral epicondyle. And here in the floor, we will see two muscles which are supinator muscle laterally and brachialis will be present medially. Similarly, you can see this diagram. Here you can see the bicepital aponeurosis. This is bicepital aponeurosis which is reinforcing the roof of the cubital fossa. This is the roof. This is medial uh, epicondyle have giving origin to the pronator teres and here there will be brachioradialis muscle. In the floor we can see laterally we can see the uh, brachialis muscle. This is brachialis. See here it will come on the medial side and laterally there will be supinator muscle. Okay. Laterally there will be supinator muscle. Now, this is one cross-section of the cubital fossa. This is humerus, okay. Here, this is medial epicondyle and this is lateral epicondyle. Medial epicondyle is giving origin to all flexors of the forearm and this will be the pronator teres which is forming the medial boundary of the cubital fossa. Laterally, we can see the lateral group of the uh, forearm extensors. Here, there will be brachioradialis which will be present, okay. In the floor, we can see the brachialis muscle. This is brachialis muscle, okay. And the bicepital aponeurosis and the biceps muscle, they are forming the roof of the cubital fossa. This is the roof of the cubital fossa. You can see the surface anatomy of the cubital fossa here. This is cubital fossa bounded by the pronator teres and the brachioradialis muscle medially and laterally respectively. And the uh, base is formed by an imaginary line which is joining the medial and the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. See here in this diagram again, the same diagram. This is the bicepital aponeurosis which is for forming the roof of the cubital fossa. This is the medial epicondyle which is giving origin to the pronator teres. Here there will be brachioradialis muscle. They have cut the brachioradialis muscle to show you the supinator muscle which is present laterally in the floor of the cubital fossa. This is the floor of the cubital fossa. Here the uh, supinator muscle is present and brachialis is present in the floor of the cubital fossa but mostly it is present medially. Okay. 
Now, what are the contents of the cubital fossa? The cubital fossa contain the following structures which are from medial to lateral side. See here, this is the medial side here pronator teres is present and this is the lateral side where the brachioradialis muscle is present. First of all, there will be the median nerve. See here, this is the median nerve which is shown in the yellow color. Then there will be the brachial artery bifurcation into the ulnar artery and the radial artery. This is the brachial artery which is bifurcated into the ulnar artery medially and the radial artery laterally. Then there will be biceps tendon. See here, this is the biceps tendon along with the bicepital aponeurosis. Okay, this will be the bicepital aponeurosis, but here the bicepital tendon will be present. And most laterally, there is the radial nerve and its deep branch. Sometime in MCQs, it is asked that what is the most lateral component of the cubital fossa or most lateral content of the cubital fossa so it is the radial nerve and its deep branch so this is the radial nerve and its branch okay this is the most lateral content of the cubital fossa here you can see the cubital fossa this is cubital fossa this is the median cubital vein okay here this is the medial epicondyle and here there will be the lateral epicondyle these are the uh, this is the surface anatomy of the cubital fossa Again, you can see the diagram of the cubital fossa. This is the medial epicondyle, which is giving origin to the pronator teres. This is brachioradialis muscle, which is present laterally. Biceps is forming the floor, uh, the roof of the cubital fossa. And in the floor, there will be the brachialis muscle medially and the supinator muscle laterally. Now some of the clinical applications, first of all the venipuncture in the cubital fossa. The cubital fossa is the most common site for sampling. We have to take the sample then we will take from the cubital fossa and for the transfusion of the blood. If we have to transfuse the blood, so we will use the veins in the cubital fossa or if we have to give the intravenous injection, so we will give in the cubital fossa because of the prominence and the accessibility of the veins because here the veins are very very prominent. When the most common pattern of the superficial veins is present, the median cubital vein is selected for the venipuncture. The median cubital vein. See here, the median cubital vein is selected. This vein lies directly on the deep fascia running diagonally from the cephalic vein of the forearm to the basalic vein of the arm. See here, it is in between the cephalic vein of the forearm to the basalic vein of the arm. It crosses the bicepital aponeurosis which separates it from the underlying brachial artery and the median nerve and provides some protection to the median nerve and the brachial artery. So what we have learned that the median cubital vein is in between uh, the bicepital aponeurosis will be in between the median cubital vein and the brachial artery. So when we will give injection or we draw blood from the median cubital vein, the bicepital aponeurosis will protect the brachial artery and the median nerve. Historically, during the days of the bloodletting, the bicepital aponeurosis was known as the grace dukes, that is the grace of God tendon, by the grace of which the arterial hemorrhage was usually avoided because the bicepital aponeurosis is protecting the brachial artery. So, it is grace of God tendon. Okay. A tourniquetus plays around the mid arm to distend the veins in the cubital fossa. Once the vein is punctured, the tourniquet is removed so that when the needle is removed, the vein will not bleed extensively. So this tourniquet will be removed once the needle is inserted. The median cubital vein, see here in this diagram, this is the median cubital vein. It is also a site for the introduction of the cardiac catheters to secure the blood samples from the great vessels and the chambers of the heart. These veins may also be used for the coronary angiography. Now, there can be variation of the veins in the cubital fossa. The pattern of the veins in the cubital fossa varies greatly. In approximately 20% of the people, a median antibrachial vein, that is the median vein of the forearm. See here, this is the median vein of the forearm because it is present in the forearm in the median position. That's why it is named as median antibrachial vein because antibrachial means forearm. So, this is median antibrachial vein or median vein of the forearm, it divides the median basalic vein which joins the basalic vein of the arm and the median cephalic vein that joins the cephalic vein of the arm. See here, this is in between the basalic vein of the forearm, this is the basalic vein of the forearm and this is the cephalic vein of the forearm. Okay, so it will be in between. See here. 
in these cases a clear m formation this is the formation of the m is produced by the cubital veins it is important to observe and remember that either the median cubital vein or the median basalic vein whichever pattern is present they crosses superficial to the brachial artery from which it is separated by the bicepital aponeurosis which i have already told you these veins are good site for drawing the blood but they are not ideal for injecting an irritating drug because of the danger of injecting into the brachial artery in these people a considerable amount of fatty tissue may overlie the vein so it will be very difficult to find out the way to give intravenous injection or to draw the blood from the vein